sometimes people have trouble starting peyote stitch. Those first couple rows are little boogers sometimes. And the bigger your project gets, the more difficult it gets to get those first couple rows right. So uh, there are ways to get around that. You can use um, a two needle start to start those first three rows of your peyote. Uh, I have a video on how to do that and I will pop a link up for that if you would like to review that. Of course, there's the traditional start, um, and I've also done a, a video on how to do just plain flat peyote. I've also done a video on how to use a product called a quick start peyote card. Uh, so that's a, a piece that you have to buy, and it is size specific, so you have to have multiple of them if you're going to use more than, if you use do peyote in more than one size of bead. Um, and they also are fairly small, so sometimes you just need an yet another option. And the, the last option that I have for you for starting your peyote is creating what I call a starter strip. A starter strip is where you have basically created a section of peyote so that all of the, the ups and downs are already there, they're all nice and even. And what you do then is you start your new peyote strip on top of that, so it's like you're just adding a new row with a temporary thread, and then you continue on with a working thread, and then later you go back and you pull that temporary thread, separate the two pieces, and then you've got a perfectly spaced and beautiful edge. And uh, so I'm going to show you how to make your own starter strip because that way, as long as you've got the beads and the size that you need, you can already make it. This is an example of why you might want to use a starter strip. This is a piece my mother made. Uh, Sig Wynn Evans is the designer of this piece. And my mom bought this pattern and created this piece. And you can see that to start this out and do a strip of peyote this wide, and have it come out nice and even and tension would be really difficult. So mom created a, her very own starter strip. Now do you think I can find that starter strip now that I'm doing a video on how to do this? Of course not. She actually made a starter strip that was even longer than this. I think that she made it about a, um, um, I think it was about a foot and a half wide, like 18 inches wide, so that she could make sure that no matter what size project she was working on, she would be able to use that. So this is what's called a beaded tapestry. Aren't they fabulous? A lot of work goes into these, but it's a lot of fun too. Um, okay, so let me kind of bring you down to the beads here and show you what I'm talking about with a starter strip. This is just a very small piece of starter strip that I created. And in this case, what I've done here is I didn't use peyote to cre create this. I actually used brick stitch to create this which means that I made it this direction. Uh, and the reason for doing that is that you get a much, a nice even tension on both sides and it will keep everything sitting exactly how you want it. Then when you use it for actually creating something with peyote, you use it across here. Okay, so let me show you how, oh, and then let me also mention the reason for these alternate color stripes here is to help you count. So this is nine, this denotes number 10 row, or the number 10 bead, and then this would be your next 10 beads, and so, and so on. So here you've got one, two, three, four, that's your fifth sticky outy, okay, or I'm sorry, that's your fifth indent. So your fifth innie, I guess that's what that would be. <laughs> and that will help you count if you're trying to figure out how many across you need. So let's talk about how to actually make that. We're going to use uh, brick stitch. And to create the foundation for brick stitch, we're going to actually use ladder stitch. So to start this out, I am picking up two beads. In this case, I'm using size 10 delicas. So I'm picking up two speeds. I'm passing back through the first one from the tail end up so that they then flip over and sit side by side. So this is just simple ladder stitch. I'm passing back down through the bead on the outside edge. I also have a video. I'm kind of moving through this a little fast, but I have a video on how to do ladder stitch, and I will pop a link up for that if you need a more in-depth review on how to create ladder stitch. 
Now it's up to you how wide you want to make this. You kind of just want to make sure that it's wide enough that you can hold on to it. My other th criteria is that I like to use an odd number of beads to do this. Okay, and this is one of my little personal quirks. So that when I finish adding that particular bead, my thread is coming out on the opposite side of where my tail thread is. That way my tail thread is always down below. I kind of use that to help hold on to it. And I prefer to have my working thread come out the opposite side. If you use an even number of beads, what ends up happening is your working thread comes down through the bead. You end up flipping it. And then both your tail thread and your working thread are coming out the top. It's just a little quirk of mine. So since it doesn't matter whether I use an odd or an even number here, I just use an odd number. OK, so the, fir the first row of brick stitch going back, your very first stitch on every row, you're picking up two beads. And you're taking your, th your needle and you're passing under the thread that is connecting those two beads together. So you're just kind of sliding it in under that thread and pulling down. Those beads will sit right up on top here. You want them to sit side by side. Let me flip this here. There we go. So there they are sitting side by side. You'll pass back up through the beads straight on top. And then to really secure this one over here, we're going to then circle back around through that and then back up through the first one. You will only have to do that extra circling around on the very first stitch of each row. So from here on out for the rest of this row, I'm picking up a single bead. I am connecting it by sliding under the thread in the next intersection between the beads. I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way here so that you can see what's going on. So I caught the thread there pull it down, pass back up through the bead that you just added, pick up a bead, connect underneath the thread of the next intersection, and then back up through the bead you just added. And then here's the last thread intersection of this uh, row. So I'm picking up one, passing under the thread, Something to notice here is my thread management as I do this. I kind of grab the thread with my finger as I come back up and kind of hold it tight off to the so side. Not tight, but taunt. Uh, because by getting that thread out of the way, I'm able to get into that bead that I just added a little bit more easily. Because sometimes what will happen is your needle will just kind of automatically, accidentally pop back under that thread again. and your bead just will come off and it just happens. But if you can get your working thread kind of out of the way a little bit, it's less likely to happen. Okay, so here you can see, here's our first innies and outies. So when I go to use this, here's my innie, there's my sticky outie. So this just automatically offsets the beads as you do the brick stitch. So here I'm gonna do the first bead, a first stitch of a row for you again. This is where we have the only time we do something different where we're picking up two. You're still popping under that first intersection. Okay. I'm passing through the ones that's straight ahead on top. We're going to get this guy to move over and sit next to him. There we go. And then we're going to circle back around those two. So down and up again. So that's the extra. So then you're just going to keep adding rows, and then if you like to keep track of your numbers, every fifth or tenth row, you would use an alternate color of your beads. And then when you're done, you've got your perfect uh, starter strip. Now, let me show you how you're going to use that starter strip. Okay, so here we are, and I'm ready to start this piece. So. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and use this lighter color to, to do this. We're going to just start out by, by actually, you're going to pass through a bead first. Doesn't really matter which one. Okay, like so. And then I'm going to pick up the first bead of my first row here. And I'm going to go along for however many beads it is I need. So, 
and let's say it's four. Okay. Now I actually want to leave myself with a little more tail here, like so. Then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut this thread because I want this to be a temporary connection right here. Okay. So you can just use a piece of scrap thread. So now what I'm going to do is when I start my next row, I'm going to start a new thread and all I'm going to do to start that new thread is I'm going to pass through two beads on the diagonal here because what I want to do is this is one thing that is important if you want to keep the, your piece even count you want to make sure that you are starting where you're adding your bead as an up bead. What you want to not do is start by passing through one of your beads that is already there and making it a low bead and doing a low bead. So what we want to do here is pick up one, pass through the next. See, so now that's going to be a high bead. Like so. And like so, okay. So I'm going to flip it over. Um, I suggest you do a good four or five rows before you try to disengage it from your starter strip. You want to have enough to hold on to and when you keep going. And you also want to make sure that in disengaging it, you don't accidentally pull it apart. So uh, if you've got it a little farther down the road when you do this, it'll be much easier. Okay, like so. And then what I can do is I can go back and I'm going to find that temporary thread that I had there and I literally just have to pull it off and then I pull from here and then Here's that tail. Now, see, I should have made that tail longer because I would have, I would still need to go back and weave this in to end it off. But there is our beautiful peyote start, and you are ready to go, and you didn't have any trouble doing that at all. It's kind of magic, isn't it? Uh, I, as I've been doing this demo, I realize that I probably need to be using these uh, starter strips a little bit more often. So I hope this helps you guys out. Um, all of those, all of you who might have had a little bit of difficulty, this is an easy way to use beads that you already have. Use those ugly ones. You know you have some that you bought that later you're kind of like, hey, why did I buy these? Make yourself a little starter strip with them because then you've found a use for those beads and yet it's not going to be beaded into your project. I know you got some. I got tons of them. So happy beading. Thank you.